Jay, what's next for you? It, fe it feels like you're kind of a celebrity out there. Like you're kind of the guy that made the comeback, the guy that was in the Twitter files, but like it feels like there's a lot of love for you on social. It feels like you're considered kind of like a, a crusader, a guy that's got a ton of credibility because of the story that you went through on this. Um, is that true or does it feel that way? And like, what's next for you? And are you optimistic about our future? Or do you think this fear game is gonna be played on us again in the next quote unquote pandemic, except this time we got CBDCs and QR codes and all this other stuff, AI, 5G, facial recognition, emotional recognition, and it's gonna get much worse. Uh, so for, for me personally, I, I need to write some memoir. I've been wor working on it uh, the, this past summer or this summer. And it's been I, like, I've, <laughs> the, the hardest parts have been like the betrayal, like the early, or the earliest days of talk, writing about Stanford because Stanford's my home. Um, but I, I threw some of the hardest parts and now I'm, I'm starting to write some of the, the more fun parts of the thing. Um, so I'm going to write this. Uh, I don't care if it sells a single book. I just need to write this. Um, I, 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 I Crusader. I, I, I never thought of my, I always thought of myself as a scientist, Brian, as, as a, someone who does, that's, that's what I do for a living. I do research for a living, right? Um, not anymore. Papers, I, not anymore. Uh, apparently not. I mean, maybe uh, someday I hope to get back to that. Um, I, it's weird because like for most of my professional life, my adult life, I sort of knew exactly my path. I could see my future. Like I'm going to write papers. I'm going to be a professor. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, I, I knew and uh, now I'm in the position where most people are in their lives as, as adults, where they can't really see the future. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like a 20 year old sc scared to death about what's going to happen to me. I mean, I'm not actually scared. I, I, I think it's, it, it's been a huge blessing. I, I saw actually the honor of my life to be able to participate in the discussion, despite the, the, uh, the, um, some of the trauma around it. Uh, and for me, uh, so as far as, you know, you asked about like what the future will look like for the world. I think we have two, two, two paths. Like we can decide that we learn the lesson from this pandemic, that we don't, that this kind of authoritarian power that was used to, to manage the pandemic is, is, is too destructive, that it doesn't actually promote public health, that it, it violates our norms of, so, of that, 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 that our, 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 the democracies and, and our liberal societies held to forever, you know, free speech, um, you know, basic civil liberties, uh, autonomy for, for over bodily rights, those kinds of those kinds of basic things, right? Um, we can decide to go back to that. We can go back to the Enlightenment. We can prove Martin Kuldorf wrong that the Enlightenment is not dead; it was just sleeping for a little while. Um, or we can go down this path of like of, of essentially freezing in place this lockdown power, this policy, and. It's not clear at this point to me which path we're going to take, Brian. We could go down either of the two, and it's up to people to decide that. We have to, and this is why that COVID commission is so important. We have to make the right choice here. We have to make clear to everybody that we do actually do face this choice. The, the fight over the, the WHO pandemic treaty may be an opportunity for us to have this conversation publicly. Um, and I think that that's... Um, it's more than just about the treaty. It's about, do we want to live in a liberal democracy with the enlightenment uh, norms guiding science, or do we want to live in a biomedical security state? Those are, those are the stakes I think going forward. And I don't know which path we'll take. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, I think most people have completely forgot about what happened. They never in their wildest dreams think that will ever happen again and I think are back to worrying about the small problems in life. And I, I just worry that this whole thing could be played out again and we don't learn from this. So uh, yeah, we're gonna just try to stay vigilant, have people talking about this. I mean, the good news is that we have been through it once. So we, we, where we were able to see a lot of things and raise doubts in a lot of institutions and people that we had never doubted before. And again, even people like you that were close to those institutions had, hadn't doubted. So I think a lot of people have seen through that. We've also become aware of people like you and other people that, you know, that walked us through those situations with truth and science. So I feel like that gives us an advantage, but I also feel like, you know, Jay, once you dial that fear up again, and this is something our, our film talks about, because when you dial that fear up, everything goes out the window. Um, all your logic, you know, all of your uh, ethics, all of everything, all of your systems and your checks and balances, 
And then it's just mayhem. You're just back in the caveman days. And so we got to really try to keep an eye on that and maybe condition ourselves. So look, I'm, um, I'm always super optimistic and super positive, but um, let's just make sure we don't go back there is what I would say. And just want to say thank you for everything you were doing. Like I said, that, that declaration was a really important uh, message and it happened at a really important time and um, it affected a lot of the ways that we thought over here. So thanks again for doing that. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me on. It's a real pleasure to talk with you. Fantastic. Next time, let's do it in person. And uh, all the best to you. Thanks so much. Take care. All right. Take care. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time on London Real. Bye. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. 
We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.